Hi, I'm Lessa Logan, founder of OnlinePilatesClasses.com, and welcome to this 50-minute beginner-friendly performer workout. It is going to target all the muscles around your legs, your stomach, your arms, and of course, by the end, you're going to have a full body mind connection, which is all we all really want, right? What you're going to need is a... Um, pair of light weights, and if you don't have light weights, like one or two pounds, then definitely grab a pair of water bottles, some cans, preferably not open, uh, anything that just has a little bit of weight to it, we will use that. Um, and if you have a reformer box, that's gonna be great. If you don't have a reformer box, you can skip those sections, you'll still get an amazing workout. If you have a bar and a ball, awesome too. If you don't have that, do not worry. When we come to these moves, I will tell you what you can do to supplement. So you're not going to miss out on a ton of things. And if you haven't yet, make sure you check out all of the free tutorials, the workouts we have on here, and our lives every Sunday at 9 a.m. where I answer your questions. 9 a.m. Pacific time. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on all that good stuff. Welcome to OnlinePilatesClasses.com, the most supportive Pilates-loving community across the globe. Enjoy new weekly classes from our amazing teachers. Download the OnlinePilatesClasses.com app today. All right, let's get started first. Before we get into it, I know you're ready to go. I'm ready to go. But it's really important that we are all talking from the same place, which means straps. Mine are pretty long, so even when my carriage is closed, my hook of my handle is an inch in front of my shoulder rest. If you are working with the double loops, you'll want to look at the ring of those double loops, and you'll want to work off of that double ring of the double loops. That way, when we work with the springs that I have suggested, it won't feel too heavy. If your straps are super short, the springs I'm going to suggest are going to be a little heavy. You'll have to supplement on your own. I'm happy to answer those questions in the comments, but if you can, lengthen your straps, please do. Also, all of my springs weigh the same weight, right? So you might have springs that are different colors. I will translate for you right now. When I say three to four heavy springs, I mean three to four of your heavy springs. So if you're working off of uh, balanced bodies, red springs, green springs, yellow, blue, I would say like three red or two red and a green um, or three red and a blue. Like you'll play, you do want to support yourself. When I say heavy springs, you want that strength that uh, those heavy springs provide and also the support that they, they provide. Also, um, when we do two springs, it means one heavy, a green and a red or two medium, right? So you'll play. If it feels like the springs are pushing you around, I want you to <laughs> switch them up. It should also not feel too easy, like you're gonna fly off on, <laughs> on your reformer. You wanna feel like you're working, like this is the perfect dance partner. So typically I would say two medium or a medium heavy when I'm working with two springs. When I am working with one spring, that is gonna be your one medium or one heavy. All right, so you get to play around. We get to find out together how this is gonna work for you. And you're gonna put in the comments below any questions you have so I can make sure that as you do this workout again, you have everything set up the way you want. Every video, every exercise we do, we have a video of. So you can check those out in our tutorials if you uh, have any questions as well. All right, now, now we can get started. So footwork, three to four heavy springs. So those are your <laughs> red, green, or whatever colors your heavy medium springs are. So probably three medium and a heavy or two medium and a heavy, and then place the balls of your feet on your foot bar. Headrest is up if that works for you. And then we just take a moment, <laughs> we're gonna notice what's touching the equipment. And this is, I know you're ready to get going, but I just want you to just take a, a second to be here. How are your feet on the foot bar? Are you rolling out to the pinky side of your toes? Are your heels too high? Are they apart? Are you hanging down? Can we get those heels together and then up? Not the highest heels you can make, but also not hanging down. Somewhere in between where it feels like work. And then arms pressing down. The space between your heart is taking up space on the carriage. So we're not roasted chickens at the grocery store. So breathe into those low ribs in the back. And then press your legs to straight and bend your knees in. When we press out, it's not about our knees dropping down. That doesn't actually mean straight. You wanna think about your thigh bones pushing away and then picking back up. So whether or not your knees feel like they've locked and loaded, that's not what we want. I'm not saying push the knees down. I want you to just imagine the femurs going away from you, that's your thighs, and then pulling into you. All the while, we're keeping the balls of our feet even on the foot bar and our heels together. It's a lot. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you, right? And I want you just to explore where you feel this right now because we're going to do this again in a moment on different spring settings just so you can understand where you have a tendency to press from and where we want you to press from, where I want you to feel this in your body. Two more like this. 
for me, I'm feeling my right leg more than my left. So that's a little unusual for me. So it's information for my body and where I am at. Then we take the feet and we come up onto the arches. Now you can do it flat on the front or on top. I want you to try to play between being hanging down here and being way on the top. So I'm somewhere in between. And then if you can bring your feet and knees together, that's uncomfortable. That's what that ball is for. Place it between your legs. Give yourself a little bit of separation and then hug everything together. Press your legs towards straight again and bend. Depending on your carriage, depending on the reformer you're working with, the way you come in is a little different. For me, I actually have to pull myself all the way in. The springs I'm working with are heavy, they're slow and grippy, and they don't close all the way on their own. Other springs are, or cables will just drag you in. So you have to do a little bit more to resist so that you're not being controlled by your springs. So that means you push your feet into your foot bar as you bend your knees. Let's do three more together. Last one. All right, we come up onto our heels. And then again, ideally everything squeezes together or you have a ball between your knees um, or a, a yoga block would be fine there as well. And we go out and in. Now the heels are interesting. One heel is gonna reach more than the other. So maybe you close your eyes to drop in and see which heel, <laughs> feel which heel, you're not gonna be able to see it, feel which heel is actually pressing in more. Or we tend to roll out to the outer edge of our heels. We want those inner heels to be pressing into the bar, why? Because I promised you, we're working your legs, <laughs> but also we're working the muscles around your core. Your inner thighs are part of your whole center. And if we let those inner heels roll off of the bar, we lose that connection. Last two. And then you'll come in, come on to the balls of the feet. So we go back to that first position, that toes position with the heels together, toes apart. Make sure that pinky toe is on the foot bar. Sometimes it has to hang off. We want it to be on there. Press all the way out, lower the heels down, and then we lift the heels up and lower them down. So how low can you go? It's not actually, <laughs> it's not about a brace. Um, it's not impressive if you can overstretch your, uh, your ankles. What I want is you to go as low as your heels can stay together and then come as high as they can stay together, all while keeping the weight even across the balls of your feet. Yes, I'm asking a lot. <laughs> if you can't do it, it's not something that there's no shame in that. It's actually more about being aware, right? It's awareness. This is a practice, not a perfect. So we are not here to make sure that we are perfect in today's class before you move on to a harder class. That's not it at all. In fact, if you are an advanced body is taking this class, it should be a hard workout because they're really working on all these connections. If you're new, be new. Allow yourself to go, oh, that's interesting. When I lower my heels, they come apart. When I lift my heels, they come apart. We'll work on that. You can comment below and let me know. So now I want you to sit all the way up and we are gonna go down to one spring. So I probably would do like, uh, if your heavies are super heavy, go to a medium. Um, you want this to be work, but uh, you don't want to, like, oh, you don't want to be too light. If it's like a yellow spring or a blue spring, that could be too light. So definitely a medium or heavy spring, but just one. Now go back on the balls of your feet. So this is footwork toes, right? We've already done this before and remind yourself you're on one spring. So it's not the same leg strength that you just used to push out on three or four. Again, double check how you are here on your carriage. It should feel a little bit more warmed up, a little bit more connected. And then we go out and in. So we are gonna do 10 of these. Now you have to work to pull yourself home. And what I want you to notice is if your feet come off of this bar, maybe not both feet, hopefully. <laughs> that would be, you'd be flying in on your own, but maybe one foot feels like it's slipping. So see if you can hug those heels tight together, stand on the balls of your feet. Float the knees up as you sink your waist down. So I put us on one spring because it's easy to leg out the footwork and it is a full body exercise. So when you go to one spring, you can really feel how much your body is involved, right? Come all the way in, come onto those arches, again, legs together or ball between your knees and then press out and in. So this one, if you can, if your ankles will allow, try to get more on the top of that bar so you can pull yourself in from the back of your legs. We tend to think of our leg work as being what we can see, but I call the muscles around your hamstrings and glutes your thighs. It's where your thigh meets your booty and includes your outer hips, 
your hamstrings and your inner thighs. And the reason we need to pay attention to our thighs is because it keeps us from overworking our hip flexors and pulling on our lower back. Come up onto your heels. Same thing, squeeze your legs together, squeeze a ball, and out and in. Now, good luck with the heels. I have, again, one of my heels likes to slip off, so I really know that I have to reach through that leg more than maybe the other one. It's also tempting to arch your ribs here. So breathe in through your nose, into your low ribs in the back, pressing your arms down. Do you feel how this is a full body <laughs> movement? <laughs> I hope so. This is where I actually can feel in footwork that it's not just about burning out my quads, that I can feel the whole, the, all the muscles around the leg have to work together to make this work. Come all the way in. Go back onto the balls of those feet from footwork toes, but this time you press out and we'll do that tendon stretch again. Lower the heels and lift. Now it's not a heavy spring, so it's not a hard exercise. So now you can just really focus on, are my inner thighs working together here? Are my outer thighs wrapping in? Am I hanging out in my knees or do I feel like I could stand here? If I was not laying on this carriage, could I stand up on the balls of my feet right now and be strong? Two more and then lift your knees to bring yourself in. All right, so that's fun. I felt a lot in my inner thighs, I hope you did too. We're gonna do uh, the 100 twice today as well. I know you might hate it, but stick with me. <laughs> There's a method to my madness. So reset your feet, make sure the balls of your feet are on that foot bar. Arms are gonna go up to the sky and then press your legs out to straight with your heels up and together. Lift your head and chest up and pump your arms for your 100 here. Inhale for five and exhale for five. So I'm having to do this because we've closed the chain. All right, the foot bar is helping us support our legs so we don't have to do it. And then we can feel our back take up space on this carriage. If you have to set your head down, you set your head down, keep the pumping going, continue to squeeze your heels together and your outer hips together and your inner thighs in. And deep breaths, inhale in through the nose, out through the nose. If you cannot go in and out through the nose, it's okay. All right, it's going to be okay. But we try. One more cycle. And come all the way in. Now, if you want to see how to use what we just learned in our legs with your foot worth full springs, feel free to pause this and do that and then join us again or save it for another day. But that was the goal of doing footwork twice on one and on four springs. Let's go back to um, three to four heavy springs and you can leave your foot bar up, especially I'm going to leave mine up just so I can show the newbies what we do, but uh, especially if you are new. So we're going to use that foot bar to rest our legs. Now, I want you to grab your handles. All right, and we're just gonna do a little prep here. So we did that hundreds curl earlier, but we didn't have any weight against us pulling us back. So I want us to leave our legs right there on the foot bar, pick your arms up to the sky, get your pinky side of the hand into the handle. You, if you're using soft straps, make sure your hands aren't turning in, but they're facing away from you. And then I want you to make sure you're not stuck in your shoulder rest. Then just curl your head and chest up, press your arms down, and then lower your head, lift your arms. Do that five more times. Curl it up, press your arms down, lift your arms, lower your head. We're trying to time the arms pressing down with the head and chest curling up from the center. It's fun, <laughs> all right? Especially when you get to let your legs rest here on this foot bar. Let's do one more. All right, if you were feeling that in your neck, you can go back to the 100 we just did on one spring, or you can do the 100 like we do on the mat with no straps, all right? I don't want the straps pulling on you. I want that arm back connection holding you up, all right? With uh, Otherwise, we are going to now either leave your legs down, if you're, especially if you're new, or you can float them up from here. Lift the head and chest up, maybe the legs come up, and pump the arms. If at any time I need to rest my legs down, I can, or I lift them up from my stomach muscles. And we'll talk about that in the next exercise, how you do that. So again, if you're brand new, you rest in there because I gotta teach you it. <laughs> and if you've done this before, let your legs try to hover above that foot bar. You can also go up towards the sky. You can also bring the knees into the chest. If with your legs out here that's too hard, instead of having your legs in tabletop, just have them straight up. It's easier. They don't drift away that way. And we inhale for five and exhale for five. <sighs> I promise after this, I'm not going to make you do the 100 again. 
One more cycle of breathing. Lower the legs, lift the arms. Go ahead and hook up those handles and then bring your knees into your chest. Okay, so we're gonna, I told you, I promised to teach you how your legs work from your center. So you did that with footwork. Now I wanna teach you the ab series. Lift your head and chest up, one knee in, one leg out. Hold on to your one shin with both hands, pulling it two times. One, two, switch. One, two. We're just gonna do three reps and you get to rest your head. So especially if you're practicing holding yourself up, you don't have to do much more than one more. Rest your head. You can look right and left. If you become more advanced at this, you don't have to take a break. You can keep doing that until we go to the next exercise, all right? Now, double leg stretch, heels together, toes apart. This is going to look very similar to the 100 we did with one spring. Lift your head and chest up. Legs go out, arms go up. Now our arms are up instead of being down by our sides, but do you see? This is the 100. So those legs going in and out, it's like pushing that imaginary foot bar away. Three more. Again, if you have to set your head down, set it down. The legs can go higher to the sky and rest. Look right and left. I believe it is brave and courageous to replace something you can't do with something you can do instead of just going, oh, I'm not good at this and quitting. Okay. Lift your straight legs up to the sky or the straightest version you can give me. Lift right and chest up, grab up as high as you can on your leg, pull, pull, switch and pull, pull. So we're just doing three of these. I know the legs are getting longer. They're getting more distal. That can be harder. And then we rest. So how do you get your legs to lift off that foot bar on their own or in the future off the frame on their own? Double straight leg stretch. So if you're brand new, hands go underneath your hips to support your lower back. If you're less new, hands go behind your head, okay? Now what we'll do, I'm gonna put my hands here so you can model with me. We're gonna straighten, take both legs straight and we'll lower them part way down and lift. The way they lift is not from the quads, it's from these stomach muscles. <sighs> they gotta pull down to lift your legs up. And they go away, the legs go away from that hamstring glute and they lift back up. One more. And we rest. Whew. All right, <laughs> one more thing and just sit up for a moment. We're gonna take those hands, interlace them behind your he head and then lift your head and chest up. You have one foot on the frame, one knee into the chest, curl up and twist to that knee and then switch, this is easier, okay? Harder is one leg out, one knee in. Three times each side. And rest, all right, sit all the way up. So hopefully you're feeling nice and warm in your center, you got all that ab strength because that's where our legs and arms work from. And we're gonna switch to two springs. So this next exercise is typically done on the mat, but it's important to me that you have a really strong connection to feeling resistance as your legs go away from you. So we will lie on to our backs with two springs on. Place the heels together, toes apart on the foot bar. All right, arms down by the side. And then it's only on two springs, so it's not as heavy as it was before. Press your legs out. It should have felt like you're doing that double leg stretch where we like sent our legs out, right? Hold it out there. Lift your right leg up as straight as you can. It can be bent as well, but the straightest version you can give me. The foot on the foot bar, can you hug that outer hip in? Boom, that muscle is on, it stays here. We take this leg that's up to the ceiling, we circle it five times. Five times across the body and around and up. If you can walk and chew gum at the same time, then as the leg goes down, the heel on the foot bar goes down. As the leg comes up, the heel comes up. That's more complicated. <laughs> All right, we reverse. You choose what works best for you, where your body and mind are. That's where the mind-body connection comes from. Asking ourselves, do I, can I do this today or do I need something different? Do I need to keep my heel still, right? And bend in, switch sides. You know, what I love about Pilates is it helps us understand where we are today. What does our body need? Five circles across the body first and then reverse. What? Do I need to go slower? Do I need to go faster? Do I need to skip that? Do I need a ball? What do I need? When you can practice during this time with you and I together, asking yourself, what do I need? Can I do more right now? Come all the way in when you're even. You are practicing that for the rest of your life, which I love. All right, now, grab your handles, knees into your chest. We're on the correct springs. We'll leave the foot bar here in case you need it as a resting point. Please know that your legs can always rest on that, okay? So ideally the knees are into the chest, elbows are into the side, and let's just leave our head chest down for a moment. Press your arms down to the mat, so now they're straight, 
and then bend them, okay? So the elbows are down, and then we press, and we bend. It's like a tricep press. I promised you arms. <laughs> We're doing it. So you're doing a little tricep press here. Now, I want you to close your eyes and just feel what's happening in your elbows. Are they lifting off the carriage as you press? Are they sliding wide to the side as you press? Or are they anchored, staying exactly where they are? If they are, lift your head and chest up. Do three more with those knees in. Keep the head and chest up for all three. And then rest. Okay, now I want you to ask yourself, do I want to keep doing what we just did or do I want more? If you want more, here we go. If you're going to keep doing what we just did, stay there. You get to stay on the train stop you want. Now we're going to press the arms and legs to straight. And we're going to bend everything in. Press and bend everything in. Press and bend it in. One more. Those elbows are not moving, right? And rest. Okay. So now we're doing the full coordination if you want to. If that was hard enough, if that version of double leg stretch we just did was hard enough, stick there or lift the head and chest up. Coordination is press the arms and legs to straight, open just the legs, close the legs, bend the knees, bend the elbows. Press the arms and legs to straight, open, close, bend the knees, bend the elbows. And again, press, open, close, bend the knees, bend the elbows. You got one more in you, I know it, you can do this. And rest. Whew. Could you pretend to feel like your legs are pushing a foot bar away? I hope so. Let's sit up. Let's take our foot bar down. And we are going to uh, keep it on two springs just for right now for some stabilization. We're going to grab that reformer box. If you don't have a reformer box yet, let me know in the comments below what reformer you're working with. I will tell you where to get a box, okay? You are going to want a box. Your reformer should ideally come with a box. If you need to skip ahead, we're doing about four exercises here, and then we will join you without the box, all right? Those of you with the box, I want you to grab your weights or your cans, <laughs> whatever it is that you have. Um, so we want to have uh, these here. And then we're going to take this box and we're going to line it up with the very edge of the carriage. So, and the reason for that is, is that we are going to need to be on the side because we'll need space for our arm. So we're going to take the box and line it up with the edge of our carriage. So I'm going to line it up with this back edge of mine just because I'll have more space. You will line it up with, you know, either side's edge. Just this edge right here is going to be fine. And then you want to have that two springs, like I said, just for stability so your carriage isn't going around, all right? Then you'll have uh, your weights. You actually only need one. So we're only going to use one. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what these moves look like standing just so you can know. You don't have to look at me and crank your neck because that's not going to be so fun. So the first one is going to be the arm going forward when we're lying down. Then you'll do that five times. So just going up, hold it, going down, going up, hold it, going down. Then <laughs> the arm starts here because we're lying down. The arm is going to go back, hold it. Then it faces the floor. Then it goes back, hold, faces the floor, okay? Then we're going to go out to the side. So my arm is facing the floor. It's going to go out to the side and down, out to the side and down, okay? After five of those, we're going to row and push it down and row and push it down, okay? So you want to set yourself up. You can either face the carriage well or you can face the footbar. It doesn't actually matter, but... Um, you want to do both sides. <laughs> so uh, what you'll do is I line myself up so that my my center is supported. Okay. So um, so I I don't want you to be so far forward with your chest uh, that you're you don't have to hold onto your legs. However, if you have uh, a more voluptuous chest or a reason to not be on your chest, then you can have your chest off of the box. Just try not to have like half your chest, like your whole half your torso off the box because you have to hold that up too. And then that's not the most fun to hold up. The legs are easier. We can do that from our center. So the hand that's not doing the work is here on the side just to support us. Inner thigh spin up, pubic bone is down. Reach the arm forward and bring it down. Reach the arm forward, hold and bring it down. Reach the arm forward, hold and down. Two more. Do you feel your shoulder coming in your ear? If so, <laughs> then we have to work on that shoulder back connection. So this next one's going to help. Pull the arm back. Feel the shoulder go away from your ear. Hold it. 
lower the arm down. And again, pull the arm back, lower the arm down. And again. Whoo, getting some shakes. Last one. All right, now we row. Actually, sorry, well, first we'll do arm out to the side first. You gotta do that fly. That's the hard one for me. <laughs> my shoulder wants to come in my ear for this one. I really have to work on it pulling onto my back. You'll probably feel your stomach muscles working here to support against gravity. And then we row five times. My hamstrings start to work because I'm not letting my uh, upper butt just grip into my lower back. I'm keeping my tailbone reaching towards my heels as I row. Woo. All right, after five, we switch sides. You can either move your box to the other side or I'll just turn around. So we do the other side. In Pilates, our arms do not work from our trapezius. They work from way down here where your low ribs are. And that's going to keep you, let's do the arm forward first. It's gonna keep you from feeling this all up in your shoulders. It's also, the more you work your arms from your back, the stronger your center is and the better your posture is, which is why we do Pilates, right? <laughs> we do Pilates so we work our whole body and we have amazing posture, which helps us sleep, which helps us digest food, which makes us more confident. Pull the arm back, hold, lower it down. And again, back, hold, and lower. It is a full body workout every time. But if we don't know how to connect our leg muscles to our stomach, like we did in that footwork with one spring, or our arms to our back, like we're doing right now, then it's just movement, it's just choreography. Take that arm out to the side and lower it down. I like to say, if Pilates is easy, you are doing it wrong. And if you're feeling like this is too easy, let me know in the comments, I wanna help you. All right, this is, I'm shaking. <laughs> I do this all the time. And then bend your elbow up and push it down. In our classes for our members on onlinepliesclasses.com, we actually do look at their form. So we can actually help them if they're not understanding an exercise. We can see how they're doing it, where they're working from, if it's a setup that's incorrect, and then they know how to do it correctly. All right, after you did five of those, hop off. Whew. You should feel nice and warm up in that upper back. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is place the box in the center of our carriage for a little swan prep, okay? So swan prep, we are gonna stay on those two springs. Uh, you can face the well or you can face your foot bar. I like to face my foot bar personally. It does mean we don't have a fancy transition to pull straps, but it's good. I'd rather you feel like you're super strong and confident. This is an extension exercise, not an arm exercise, although it will feel like an arm exercise if you are doing it like a push-up. So let's talk about this. Spin the inner thighs up, reach the tailbone down, have your hands. I like to have them where the frame meets the foot bar and my shoulders over my wrist. So not in front of them, not behind them. Then I'm gonna bend my elbows and lower my chest as I lift my legs. Then I lift my chest, lower my legs. So it feels like a seesaw. That's all. It's not a big movement. You're not trying to back bend in your lower back and put your head on your toes. You're just trying to move your heart forward, move your heart up, move the heart forward, move the heart up. And we do one more and we rest. All right. Then drop down to one spring before you lie on your stomach facing this way. I want to do pull straps real quick with weights, just so you know what we're doing. If it's new to you, if you already know what pull straps is and you want to do it with the straps, you can do extra that way. So we're going to grab these weights. We're gonna have our shoulders line up with our shoulder, with the edge of our box, if we can. If that's too much, you need your chest off the box. Just move only as much as you need off the box. So you have to support your own center, okay? These legs, they want you to support them. Arms start by your side, and then they pull back. So we just did this as a single arm exercise, and then they come down. Now, what's different on this exercise is we pull both arms back, we pull our shoulders on our back to do that, and then maybe our heart goes forward like that swan. And then we lower everything down. And again, pull the arms back, heart forward. Nice little shaking happening. And then we lower everything down. And again, pull the heart forward. Ooh, okay. So that's gonna be pull straps one. T-pull, the arms start out to the side. The arms pull back, your chest goes forward. Arms go out to the side. And then we pull it back. Arms go forward. One more. Ooh, okay, now. 
You can repeat that with the weights, especially if you're new. Otherwise, you're on one medium or heavy spring, right? And we have our hands on our pull straps. We walk our hands up as high as we can. We get our straps taut without opening the springs. And then we pull the arms back. The heart pulls forward, maybe. Some people do this where the heart pulls, pulls up first. The arms pull back first, and that's why the heart can pull forward. One more time. Woo! All right. T-pull. So we take our arms wide to the side, pull it back and up. Those arms stay up the whole time. They will want to go down when your heart goes up. They go up as your heart goes up. Two more. If you're like, Leslie, I'm just getting it. Yeah, well, Pilates is about quality over quantity. So it's better to just do a few reps and really work on getting it well than just doing a bunch at a time just to burn out. We're not here to burn out. Box goes away. Those of you who didn't have a box yet are joining us. So long stretch. Headrest goes up, two springs on. I would suggest at least two red. I would prefer a red green. So AKA two heavy springs or a heavy medium spring. Um, and I want you to pay attention to me. If you are wearing socks that don't have stickies, you do need a sticky pad here, all right? If you um, have stickies on your socks, and then you can probably get away with this. Pay attention, we don't step up on the carriage first. Hands on the foot bar, then a foot. So you're already in a, almost a plank. And then this other foot comes up. Oh, hello, pull straps. We were just in this position on the box. We just had to hold ourselves up, right? Now, with those legs working, you push the carriage away and you come in. Remember our footwork and how it felt to push out to footwork toes? Your footwork toes legs are moving this carriage. I know you want to move from your shoulders. We just did all that work with the weights and with the straps to not use our shoulders. One more. And if you're like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. You could just hold the plank. <laughs> you can just hold the plank, okay? It's totally fine. Now, this next exercise is called elephant. I want you to go back to that double straight leg stretch we did on the ab series, hands behind the head, both legs down, both legs up, right? That you can do if you don't want to do this, especially if you don't like being on your wrists, okay? But it's a round shape, yeah? So we're going to do a round shape here. I don't normally teach this to beginners because it's so easy to down dog, but I trust you. You're amazing. So you're going to dig your heels in front of your shoulder rest. Let your head hang and then keep half the weight in your arms, half in your legs. Is your carriage still closed? If the carriage is open, close that carriage to begin. Keep those heels down. Lift your waist up. Not because your shoulders come in your ears. Remember what it felt like to have your shoulders on your back from that series we did with the weights. Then your heels go out and they go in. And again, it's not a big movement. My legs go out only as far as I can lift my waist up. So if I was to flip myself upside down, I'd be doing that double straight leg stretch. Two more. Last one. Rest. Okay. If you have a sticky pad, move a sticky pad down and go to the same springs you did for footwork, either three to four heavy. If you don't have a sticky pad, stay on those two springs, okay? Um, or you can put a TheraBand down and that will hold you still because I don't want you to slide back. Then we have a seat on our carriage. You want to be as close as you can be. So that's going to depend on your body type, right? And then you put your feet up here on the foot bar. If when you put your feet up, you fall back over, it's too tight of a position. Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear because I want to help you, but you can scoot your hips back just a little bit more, right? And then heels together, toes apart. We're in a round shape. We push the legs out. We lower the heels, lift, and we come in. This is the same as footwork, toes, and tendon stretch. So we're just combining some exercise we've already done and we're putting ourselves in a round shape, the same round shape we were in for coordination. Do you see how the exercises layer together? It's fun, right? The more you can see those connections, the more easily you can advance to the next level, the more you're gonna get out of this. Pilates is a mind-body connected exercise. It's not a tune out and somebody moves me exercise. You get to move you. That's the best part about it. I love helping you do that. Come all the way in. Stay on these three springs unless you were doing this on two. And then your hands come back behind you. Now, if this is too tight, you can hold the sides of the shoulder rest. If that's still too tight, then I want you to get a foam roller or a bar so your hands can go wide to the sides, okay? But ideally, we're way up here without locking our elbows. We push out, we lower, lift the heels. 
come in. If you are losing your pants, <laughs> two things are happening. It could be your pants with the stickies and the underwear garments you chose. I'm just gonna be really honest, that does matter. Or you are using your legs too much, okay? We wanna use our sit bones into the carriage to push the carriage away. So it's like my pelvis is digging down and pushing back without me slouching. All right. If you're resting on your arms like crazy, you will also lose your pants. <laughs> it's just a fact. Come all the way in. I know all the cheats, my loves. I know them all. Arms forward. Press out and in four times. With the shoulders and on your back, squeeze those heels together. And then come all the way in. Step all the way off to the floor. All right, so now we're gonna grab our short box. So again, if you do not have a short box, again, I wanna know your reformer in the comments so I can support you. Uh, you're gonna skip ahead four exercises, we're gonna join you, okay? So this short box comes on. If you have a bar, this is where you're gonna use it. If you don't have a bar, as promised, I will tell you what you're going to do. All right, then make sure your box is even so you don't have it too off to the side on either side. I don't want you to fall. Then you're gonna use your straps to place your feet under the strap. That's gonna hold you down, okay? And then we are going to place your arms around your waist. So that round shape we just did in your stomach massage, here it is again, round back and round up. Not, not huge. Eventually we advance and we back bend over, but not today. We're gonna build you up there. That's what we do in our OPC classes. We build you up. We connect themes to each other so you can start to see how each exercise connects and you become your own teacher of your own body because it's your body, right? I don't get to be with you when you're walking up the stairs or down the stairs and I want you to take this information with you. All right, now grab your bar if you have it. If you don't, here's what you're gonna do. You're going to take your thumbs and hook them, and then you'll take them over your head, just like that. You can also put your hands behind your head, but I like the arms reaching up so you can practice, and then eventually you're just gonna go to the hardware store and get a dowel. All right, we pull this bar apart. We look straight ahead. You lean back and you lift up. If you looked at the ceiling, <laughs> look at the tip of your nose instead so that you can really work on this tall back. So this tall back is what we did when we were in footwork. We had a strong back. We had the carriage supporting us, but now you get to learn how to support yourself, just like you did in that long stretch exercise. One more time. And then we stay up, we twist, we reach, and we come up. We twist and reach. So we're just adding. If you're like, oh, I don't know that I wanna reach yet. Then you twist, you come to center. You twist and come to center. This is your practice. I would rather you go, warning, I shouldn't do that. And then ask yourself what you can do instead or ask me <laughs> and I'll support you. All right, if you're doing that twist and reach one last time on either side, awesome. Okay, we are gonna do a little tree. So I'm gonna teach it as if you don't know it because I really want you to have a good relationship with tree. A lot of people don't love it. You hold this leg here, you sit up as tall as you can. If your leg is out here and that's as tall as you can be, that's fine. Then you straighten and bend wherever your leg is. So if your leg is up here, you straighten up here. Now my leg doesn't always go to straight up here. So this is a little hamstring stretch, okay? And then we walk up to your ankle. You get as high as you can. If your leg looks like this, that's okay. Then your head goes to your knee and you're just gonna round back and you're gonna round up. So it's the same rounding we did, but now we have one leg in our hands. If you're like, oh my God, I'm a little scared. It's okay, I get it. I was so scared the first time. Um, also just make sure your strap is on your ankle. <laughs> it's gonna help you. And then come all the way up. All right, other side. So first we straighten, then we bend, and we straighten, and we bend. And then we walk up, and we flex point, and we bend, and we rock back, and we round up. And we're just doing this to get used to it. Eventually we're gonna walk it down and up this leg, and then maybe a back bend, and then maybe some circles. There's no stopping us when we do Pilates together. One more. All right, go ahead and get rid of that. Get rid of your box and bar, if you had one. You're not gonna need that box again. So if you didn't have a box and you're joining us now, don't worry, we're not grabbing that again. What we are gonna do is grab our straps. If you already have foot loops on, they're long, you're good to go. If you're like me and you don't, we have to put those straps on. So we put it around the leather loop and handle and we hook it up 
and then we put it around the other leather loop. You want to make sure if you're doing this, that you don't have any twists in your strap and that the hook is on the other side. Now that ball, I want you to have it where your hands can grab it because we are going to use it. If you don't have the ball, don't worry. You can do this without the ball. All right. Then we lie down and we bring our knees into our chest and we grab these straps. And in an ideal world, you'll put both feet in at the same time, okay? If you're putting one foot in at a time, one, make sure you always put, you switch legs, which ones you're doing. And two, please make sure that you had the straps long enough so you don't roll off to the side, okay? Safety first. Once both straps are on your feet, heels together, toes apart, arms come down by your side. Oh my gosh, are we doing footwork again? Sort of. Heels together, frog out, and in. Let's do three together. And then bend in, grab that ball, place it between your feet. If you don't have the ball, then you're just going to keep going with your frogs. If you have a ball, you're going to notice that when you bend your knees in, the ball rocks around. That's a sign that you are relaxing. And remember, this is a full body workout with emphasis on the legs to the stomach and the arms to our center and a mind-body connection. I promised you that. So you have to squeeze your heels together more as you bend your knees in and press your feet into the straps so you are resisting and not being pushed around. One more time, bend in, take the circle out, the ball out, and then press out and do two without the ball to see how hard you work. I'll check you out. You're a pro, stay out there. Five circles each direction. These are not big circles. You go up as high as you can keep your tailbone down. You open as wide as you're a farmer and you only push as low as you can push from the back of your leg. After five, we reverse. So as I said, if you are wondering if you're doing this right, absolutely you can ask questions. But if you want me to look at your form, if you are wanting to understand how all these exercises work together, if you're wanting to share how this really worked and get some in, some feedback, that is what our OPC, our online plies classes.com uh, community is all about. Bend your knees in, take these off, we're not done. <laughs> Drop those in the well. And we put our foot bar up for knee stretches, okay? Two springs on, hands on the foot bar, and then feet into your shoulder rests. If you cannot be on your knees right now, by all means, you can go back to that ab series. Don't leave yet. We have a 50-minute workout together, and I've got something else for you where you're lying back down, and I want you to hear it and feel it and do it. So we have our hands on. We have our knees here. You can have a ball between your knees, and then your feet go into the shoulder rests, okay? We're not sitting down. We're standing up here. You should feel the back of your legs working, and then you only move the carriage as much as the back of your legs are working. So you squeeze those legs together and you push and pull. Yeah, our members only group, they love to share their wins. They love to share how things are feeling. They love to share the connections that they have. And they're all taking the same class at the same time, same week, so they can really understand each other's favorites and inspire each other to move. Now we hold it in, flip your spine, and then bring your knees together, together towards each other and then push out and in. So our chest is up. We're not sticking our booty out. This is not a twerk. <laughs> We're just pulling our heart forward and pushing our legs back. Because it's really fun to have community. It's really nice to have people to help support you and help you show up even when you don't want to. That's what I love to do. I love to help hold you accountable. <laughs> All right, round your back. Place one foot to the front of the carriage. You can keep this knee down or a little bit more up level is knee up and we go out and in. So it's down or it's up. And you do five on each side. Feel your legs? <laughs> Hopefully you feel your legs and your stomach because your stomach has to work against the gravity here. Out and in. All right. Come all the way down. Add those springs you had for footwork. So three to four heavy springs. Lie on your back. Your headrest should already be up. We have running and pelvic lift. Okay. Before we move, place the balls of your feet on the foot bar parallel and just tap in. How does your body feel now? 48 minutes since we first lied down together and checked in. Press your legs out to straight with your heels up. Lower one heel as you lift the other and then switch. As you go up and down, notice if your heels are turning out or turning in. This is information for things we have to work on. And 
can be inspiration for future workouts if you're an OPC. I love helping you move. I love helping you connect the exercises to each other. Bend your knees, come in, take your heels wide. And most importantly, I love to help you do life better. Lift your pelvis up for pelvic lift. The pelvis stays up. You only go out as much as you can reach through the back of your legs without lowering and lifting your hips. And so make sure you check out the awesome promo we have for you as a YouTube user at onlinepliesclasses.com slash YouTube. <laughs> So we can play together, we can support you in your practice, we can help hold you accountable to the work that you're wanting to do and the goals that you have. Come all the way in, lower your hips down. Final exercise, go to one spring, place your foot into the shoulder rest, hands here, we're doing Eve's lunge, push out, lift this hip point up, open your chest. Come in, reset. It's really easy to hang out. I don't really want you to hang out in the flexibility. I want you to feel this because Pilates is not about stretching. You get flexible doing Pilates, but we do that by strengthening the muscles and activating them and working them against each other. Pull that heart up. <sighs> Most importantly, thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me teach you and letting me move you. Thank you for letting me share my love for Pilates with you and help you connect each exercise to each other. I know this can be challenging and maybe there's some exercises you couldn't do. And I want to hear about those in the comments below so I can help build you up, so I can give you suggestions on tutorials you should be doing to prepare yourself, okay? It's not about being perfect. Switch sides. Close the carriage first. It's not about being perfect ever. If you can't do an exercise yet, it doesn't mean you'll never be able to do one. It doesn't mean that you're not good enough to do Pilates. It just means we have a different journey to get you there. And that's the fun part. It's all about the practice and the process and understanding that today, maybe it was really hard, but tomorrow might be different. So come back and try it again. The more you understand these exercises, the more you learn them for your body, the more you can make braver decisions on what your body needs that day. Maybe it needs a little extra. Maybe you do need to lift your knees up on those knee stretches. I'm Leslie Logan, and I really enjoyed teaching you today. So again, I hope you check us out over at OPC where we can support you with our community, our weekly new classes, our monthly themes, our incredible teachers, and helping you with your form. And if not, if you're not ready for that yet, then make sure you are subscribed to this channel, you hit the bell, and you join us on Sundays at 9 a.m. Pacific time so I can answer your questions live. And most importantly, make sure you're taking time for yourself believing yourself and connecting to yourself because that mind-body connection takes you through everything you're doing in this life. Thank you for hanging out with us at onlinepliesclasses.com where we do life better.